Yes, I guess you appropriately, I think, Ben chose to not record the uh, deliberations on Morianne. Right, right. But and then you had to remember to hit it when we changed uh, changed our page. Okay. So the meeting's being recorded now, and so um, now our next applicant. Let me go just go back to the agenda quickly. Um, we have the Emily Dickinson Museum, and so I'm going to add Celine Weber and Jane Wald to the meeting to make their presentation. Okay. And um, as a reminder, so there's two applications for the Dickinson Museum, and uh, the first one is like their path and lighting project, and then a second quick one is a town project that just happens to be on their property. Um, and it's a, for a welcome, a wayfinding sign. Okay. And, and right. I'm gonna, I'm just, I'll we'll make present that. that and discuss that, yeah. Okay. So, but we'll do their their path and lighting project first. So um, welcome Celine and, and Jane, both of you, uh, you're muted currently, but I'll- uh... Oh, there's Jane, okay, okay. Hello, I'm uh, Jennifer Taub, um, the chair of the uh, commission. And um, well, I know Jane's been through this process before, but just uh, briefly, we'll invite you to make your presentation. And then, um, you know, during the public portion of the hearing, uh, the commissioners may have questions or uh, request more information. And then we'll close the public portion, although you'll still be with us. And then we'll. Um, discuss it amongst ourselves and then take a vote. So thank you for coming and I will turn it over to both of you now. Hey, thank you, Jennifer. I'm going to just begin by uh, describing the goals of this project, uh, okay. of the PATH planning project twofold. Um, the PATH, I'll start with the PATH itself. It's a, uh, uh, we're endeavoring to uh, reinstate a historic path between the homestead and the evergreens that was known to be um, uh, very frequently traveled by members of the Dickinson family between their two homes. Uh, there are existing uh, historic photographs that show the layout and suggest the materials of the path and where uh, we would like to put that back in place, both as, as a uh, historic feature uh, and on a, on a very practical and much needed uh, note to uh, provide an accessible way for visitors to make their way between the two homes uh, on their uh, public tours of the property. Uh, the lighting component uh, includes the path. We need some kind of uh, lighting of the path during um, shorter winter days when uh, the sun goes down before our uh, public hours are over and for our occasional evening events. We're also uh, hoping to provide some uh, architectural lighting to the various facades of the two houses, um, it, intending it to be kind of gentle lighting, but um, the goal there is to um, call some attention to the homes as uh, the, uh, significant cultural assets right in the center of Amherst. Yeah. So with that, I will uh, ask Selena to, to take over. Thank you. Thank you, Jane. Um, can you hear me okay? I have a different mic. Um, yes, I can hear yes. you. Okay. Yes, very well. Okay, good. Um, thank you, Jane. Um, <laughs> So uh, my name is Selena Weber. I'm a landscape architect working with uh, Martha Lyon of Martha Lyon Landscape Architects on these improvements that Jane mentioned. And I want to start by saying that, um, well, Martha's been involved in a number of projects with the museum. She's also, uh, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago, she worked on the um, preservation plan for the town of Amherst. And as part of that uh, community involvement, they found that overwhelmingly the town felt that the Dickinson houses were the most important asset in town. So this is really um, an important feature. And um, so the museum reached out to her to um, uh, 
make some of these uh, improvements on the property that Jean mentioned. Um, so the goals again were to highlight the, the architecture of these historic homes uh, during evening hours, kind of uh, extending their presence in town beyond just daylight. And also to um, improve the safety um, on the property. So, uh, you know, to uh, illuminate the path to make it safe to walk uh, during um, darker hours. So, um, we, as part of this project, we uh, worked with an architectural lighting designer to help us come up with um, the best way to light these um, facades and the path. And it was a, uh, uh, it's, it was not a simple pro process. Um, he actually came and worked on site to um, test the temperature of the light and uh, distance and really kind of fine tuned it to a point where it was, um, uh, beautiful without being overpowering. So um, let me see. Um. Um, Selena, I also have your, uh, this is like the 21 page, you know, like Great. Um, lighting yes. demonstrations, uh, if, if this is a helpful tool for you. Yes, <laughs> we'll, we'll want to uh, probably refer to those. Okay, I'll, um, I'll keep. Keep but maybe, up. yeah, start with this one here. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I'm just trying to find, I had something I wanted to say here. Um, right, so uh, the, the, the second goal um, was to increase the safety and the security by illuminating the paths, you know, making sure it was safe to walk, um, that you're not tripping over anything and then providing some security lighting at night. So um, the idea is to illuminate these two buildings um, during evening hours. Um, and if you look at the plan, there are these fan-shaped um, little lights uh, pointing. Yes, there you go. Thank you, Ben. Mm -hmm. um, pointing that uh, at the uh, facades. And so that fan shape uh, indicates the, the beam of the light. And so we've worked on making sure that we're putting the light on the house and not spilling beyond the house. Mm. There's several different types of lights. They're the ones that Ben was just pointing at. <clears throat> Those are um, a broader beam. Then there are some lights that are, <laughs> excuse me, um, placed much closer to the house. There are kind of a narrow wall washing light that kind of fills in some of those gaps as the two beams um, leave some darker areas. Um, in addition to lighting the facades, um, we'll also be lighting uh, on the evergreens, the, the tower. Um, I don't know if that's the correct architectural term, but. Um, and then the cupola on the homestead. And um, so that, those are the lights illuminating the facades. Then there's path lighting, which, yeah, Ben's cursor is right there. Those circles indicate the downspread light from fixtures mounted in the trees. And if you can look in the trees, there's little dark circles. Those are meant to indicate, there you go, mm -hmm. the lights that are mounted on the trunk of the tree, they're pointing down and the circle is the approximate spread of the light. So we're, we've tried to uh, create a fairly even wash of light. There's some gaps, but it, it's not critical that the whole thing be lit, but to kind of create this um, uh, pathway that's visible. They're also um, on the back side of the homestead, there's those little fan lights. Those are down lights on a little pathway. Um, and 
near the garage, there are lights mounted on the garage and then there's the circle with the crisscross pattern mm -hmm. that's indicating uh, the okay. spread of the light from the security lights. And then similarly on the back side of the evergreens, there are tree mounted security lights that are also you know, down, downward pointing. And those security lights will be on all night long. The other lights will only be on in the evenings. The, and to last, water. the last um, bit of lighting is in front of the gateways um, along the fence on the outside between the sidewalk and the fence. Um, it'll actually be probably better to look at that on one of the other drawings, Ben, because it's so small on this one. So if you scroll mm -hmm. down um, to the fence post, yeah, one more. So yeah, here the, the plan is blown up. If you scroll just a little, yeah. So you can see where the sidewalk is between the sidewalk and the fence post, we're putting in a flush mounted recessed light, which points up at the fence post. And this mm -hmm. is going both in front of the homestead and in front of the evergreens. And you can see it in elevation and in plan in this drawing. Those are the different kind of lights. I guess we could scroll back and look at the light elevations. Um, this is the homestead, I mean, the evergreens. Mm -hmm. And you can see they, these, are, these lights are mounted on posts, on granite posts. Um, and, you know, we're aiming them on the house. Mm -hmm. And similarly, if you could scroll back up, the same thing is for the homestead. Um, there are the post mounted lights which you can see on posts and then that um, like a wagon wheel like a steering wheel or a ship's wheel light it's just the symbol we used for those wall washing lights which are closer to the house and um, spread up the wall of the house okay and then these ones are for the cupola those here. are for the cupola they're mounted on the chimneys um, okay. and so they won't be visible right you know to uh, to the street um and then there's one more act um one more um part of this is that the pendant lights at the entrances to both of these um houses are currently quite bright so we're going to tone them down so they're a little more pleasant mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. Great. And I noticed there are some pictures here of like the demonstration. Oh, the yes, system. there you go. So yeah. um, the demonstration for the evergreens, which is shown right here, was done a year or two ago. And um, we captured it with photos. This is not up anymore. I hope you right. all had a chance to visit to see the homestead demonstration, which is still up. It's not all the lights that we'll be installing, but it is um, representative of the post mounted lights that are um, shining from farther away onto the house. So you can scroll down to L11. This is what's up currently. So mm -hmm. what's missing here is all the wall wash, not all the wall washing lights are in here mm. and the cupola is not lit. And I think there's one more picture, which this isn't a great picture. This is, um, a path light at the old manse in Concord. Um, and so this is a starting point, but what we're planning to do is our lights will be um, wider and the shroud will be longer, um, I mean, shorter, so that uh, the effect is not so much of a spotlight like you're seeing in this drawing or mm -hmm. in this photo, it'll be kind of a more even spread. Yeah. Golly. Very well thought it through. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Um, the photometrics, we've uh, decided to use the 2200 um, lights on the homestead. That was um, nice and warm. On the um, evergreens, the lights, I don't, we didn't have the, the photometric sheet when I submitted. Mm -hmm. 
um, were 2,700 um, Kelvin, um, the color of the evergreens is richer. So it kind of has the same effect. We didn't have to change the light to the 2,200. And uh, are you using the 7, 11, or the 15 watt? Uh, we are uh, using the um, 15 watt. Oh, OK. Yeah. Although I have to say, when we get ready to install it, the lighting designer did make it clear that he, you know, he may make some adjustments because we want these houses to look fabulous, you know. Um, a question, it seems like questions are about to be in order, if yes, not can I, me. Can anyway. I can't see everyone but, asking questions yet. Um, but, um, so this is Bruce speaking, yeah. Um, first question is, uh, is this going before the planning board as well as us? It is, yes. We presented to the planning board and they've, um, they, and, uh, what's the word? They were going back to them because they wanted to hear what you had to say. Oh, okay. Um, I don't know the planning board too well now, Nate, Ben. Um, are there people on the planning board who have some wisdom when it comes to uh, uh, exterior lighting? Um, there's multiple architects on the planning board. Well, you know they, that. <laughs> they, they, they may have. Uh, um, one of the things that I've uh, noticed um, with lighting design over my 50 years, 30 of them here, I guess, so let's say 30, is that um, uh, is, is your lighting designer um, based in, 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 an, in an urban area? Are they Boston based or, or do they? Yes. Uh, they yes. are. The, the tendency for urban lighting designers is to overlight rural um, situations. Um, I've seen that over and again, particularly with schools uh, where they, uh, they don't seem to understand that uh, Hilltown schools and people who live in Hilltowns have a different sensibility when it comes to intensity of light than people in urban areas. And it's, it's profound, let me say, um, which is why I was thinking that as you looked at those, it, it may be that something less than the 30 watt um, uh, power might be sufficient might be. I mean, this is this is speaking personally now, but I I I would uh, suggest only that uh, be aware that uh, there may be and Amos may be different because we are. Uh, although we're a country town, we've got a lot of city people living in it, and so it may not apply so much. But my concern, uh, and and it's more appropriately a concern that the planning board would have, I think about the intensity of lighting and also the cutoffs. It seems that, can, 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 do you, are you reasonably confident that, the, uh, that the, there will be no spillage? Because we probably should be concerned a little bit about uh, over, over spill and, 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 and night sky, dark sky lighting concerns and so forth. Uh, how, how, can, how confident are you uh, that the, that the um, the, the targeting of the light will really uh, be contained, will be, will be, will not creep past the building. Well, we worked really hard on placement of the lights so that we would achieve that. And obviously when it comes to installation that can be tweaked to, um, okay. you know, this is just a drawing, but it will be tweaked to the architecture. The uh, eaves of the house help us somewhat so that, um, Ben, if you scroll to one of the elevations. So um, the, the homestead ha doesn't have as much eaves, but if you look at the angle, the six, for example, um, on that. The, the wheel washer type lights. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, the, you know, we're gonna try to, uh, to we're gonna, point them in a way that, you know, we're not pointing them up into the sky because we might as get our get our money's worth and point it at the house, which is what we're trying to do, right? That's a good answer. Yeah. Um, and the on the evergreens, the if you scroll to that, the um, the eve is even longer. So that kind of right. helps us have a little play there. Yes. 
Okay. Does that answer your question? I, I'm done for the moment, yes. Okay. I have, I have some comments. Okay. Uh, Peggy, and then we'll go to Bruce. Okay, Peggy, go ahead. Okay. Um, my concern has to do with that area between the Dickinson property and the back of the Amherst College Residence Hall. Right now, that and I live on the corner of Leslie and Triangle. I know this. I know this neighborhood, round you know, round the clock for many years now, and it is very dark at night in that zone. And my concern, and, and there's, and that area serves as a, a bit of a wildlife preserve. In the last, it's been particularly intense the last few weeks. There have been some foxes seen. There were even some bears in the neighborhood. Uh, it's like, because it's been darker and quieter, which I assume has to do with the pandemic and there are no students in the two dorms, the two Amherst College residences are not occupied right now, the ones that are on Lessey Street. Um, just, I have a concern about it, about overlighting that, that wildlife area. That's one of the few areas right in town where there is a sense of old Amherst and and the sort of the mystery and the quietness and the darkness, the nights are dark, we're not in the city. Uh, so uh, I, I, just, I just have some, some questions about how, whether this adequately preserves the sense of old Amherst when the Dickinson home, when there were not bright lights, the so room in that way. And I would guess I don't even know what kind of lighting they were using to, to travel mm -hmm. up and back, but but just how whether whether this would go too far into a modernizing lit up dimension. And my husband and I took the drive last night just um, relatively late to just see what it felt like driving by, by the two the two homes and and, and you know there were lights you can see them and and, and it felt to me proportional to the neighborhood to Amherst to evening in a way that that having you know I'm just concerned about it possibly being overly lit and I know so little about lighting that I don't you know uh, stage lighting I know I don't know I don't know landscape lighting so I don't I don't quite you know I don't feel like an expert bringing bringing a, a, a an opinion in but but a neighbor and a neighbor of very many years mm -hmm in the Dickinson district right here. So that kind of echoes Bruce's concern about rural lighting not being overpowering. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that's very, I think that's critical that it not overpower that, that what is it, what is the purpose? Is it to say, ho ho, we've got the Emily Dickinson or is, or is it safety? Uh, walking between the two things, I'm not sure quite what the, what the, uh, what the, designing of the lighting is, is which needs are being served uh, and how, how so it raises questions for me that I, I, I don't, I'm not an expert, I don't have answers. So I don't know if this is helpful or not, but there were bears and there were fox this week in that, <laughs> in that, in that zone. And that's for better or for worse, but that's where we live in rural Amherst and we share it with the wildlife. Yeah. Yeah, so that's my concern. Uh, Selena, did you want to show stop? I think. And do you want me to respond to that? Bruce, did you have a, a follow up question? Well, it was uh, something a little closer to a point of order in a way. Yeah. Um, uh, it's more a question, let's say, but not of uh, the applicant, but of uh, ourselves uh, and, 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 and Nate. It seems to me that this is coming before the historic uh, district commission, local historic district commission, looking for approval for the bollards and the various visible elements uh, that the lighting will sit on, which is almost nothing because some of them are flashed with the yeah. ground and some of them are in the trees, but there are granite posts or, uh, that support them. So it, it seems to me that it's it's those posts and and those those infrastructural presences that we're being asked to uh, um, uh, to, you know, to, to consider. Yeah. Um, 
it seems to me that the the lighting itself is not something that uh, I mean, because of course, when I, we look at uh, is it uh, consistent with the historic character? Of course, there's no change except that the historic character is being illuminated uh, <laughs> when the sun doesn't do it, and uh, and so we can we can appreciate that, I guess. But it's it, my question is, do we have uh, does the is the actual lighting and and so forth? Do, 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 do we have any standing in regard to that, or is that purely the planning board? Bruce, that's a good question. Um, <clears throat> I, I um, this Nate, we in the Amherst Media Building, we definitely um, weighed in on their sign and the lighting. Mm -hmm. We did, but it doesn't mean that we should have. Mm -hmm. well, this think, is the, the whole point of this application, or the, the huge portion of it, is to do with lighting, and that was not the case with Amherst Media. So the question has to do with. Uh, um, do we have business? Should we have business in uh, coming to judgment on the lighting as opposed to the infrastructure that's supporting the lights? Yeah, Bruce. As as we were reviewing this, I was you know I was kind of thinking that um, the commission um, could have a you know a, an agreement or something that goes to the planning board. You know, so whether or not this is approved, you know, there is concern for. You know, being dark sky compliant, and you know, if it's if things are being over overly lit, I, I do think it's a I, I, you know I, to answer your question uh, squarely. I'm not sure with Amherst Media. I mean, the commission looked at the fixtures themselves too, like you're, you're doing here. Yeah, didn't discuss so much how much light was being shown, other than you know, it's not going to go over the property boundaries or onto neighboring property. So, um, yeah, I mean, here the question of you know how much is visible. It is some of just the bollards and the the posts and maybe the fixtures would be, um, if some of the fixtures would be. So, I mean, it could be that I the think... commission wants to uh, send a transmittal to the planning board, just you know, saying that there's a discussion about you know the being dark sky compliant or something, and it's not you know it's not part of the the vote. Hmm. It so looked to me as though it was just on the um, on the um, hardware. Yeah, the, yeah. I'm just wondering, um, to Selena or Jane, are there um, is there any images of the fixtures themselves in yes, here? Yes, there are. I've oh, seen cool. them. Okay, yeah. cool. You see, they're nicely hooded, so it does look as though they're 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 equipped to do the job so to speak at least that's what i thought and then one question i had this is nate again are the are the lights in the trees are they has the um electrical inspector or, or staff commented on that in terms of attaching light fixtures to we haven't gotten any comments on that um it's and um... These, are, these will be uh 12 volt lights mm -hmm. um it's so. it's it's uh, it's commonly done um so it's not like this is a right right you know it's low voltage as one yeah yeah but it's you know it's tricky you've got to uh, bring them in underground and then you've somehow got to bring that conduit up right um, not against a building but against a tree so it it can be awkward but mm -hmm. it can be the... done well or less well and i'm it sounds like these folks know what they're doing um, May I ask a question? I'm sorry, uh, Jim. Jim's been wanting to ask a question, Jim, or well, make a comment. To, um, you know, I, I think Bruce brought up a good point about the dark skies. That was my main thing. But the lights that are currently on the garage at the homestead, will they be similar uh, in 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 the sense that they have a cone shape on the outside of each bulb, so the light really is directed very specifically. Uh, more like a, um, uh, not like a floodlight that goes all over, but one that's uh, specific. Uh, Correct. So spot, spot it will be light. very much like the lights on the path. There'll be light, they'll be mounted to the corner of the garage pointing down. Mm -hmm. um, and it will be less intense than the current um, uh, lighting on the garage that okay. is there currently. Yeah, well, those are very strong, but. A question. Yes, mm -hmm. Karen. Um, the light, the path between the uh, two buildings, is that 
are you planning to keep that on as part of the lighting or is that just used in the evening when you have something going on so oh, that's a good question so the currently the pathway is planned to be lit um you know in the winter when it starts to get dark in the evenings from maybe four to six and then occasionally if there's a special event the lights would be turned on that's what i thought yeah that's good and obviously all this lighting has separate switches so you can be very specific what lights you're gonna have. correct yeah. good mm. but then that's actually a good question just following on karen's but the lights are they on all night kind of for security or just till midnight the security lights are on all right. night but the, 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 the yeah. house will be lit till 10 10 30. oh okay okay yeah. thank you and peggy did you have an, a question well i guess what i'm hearing to clarify is so it sounds like the area behind behind the house between between the uh the Amherst college residence and the dickinson properties that area would still be dark it sounds like am i am i understanding it correctly or Yes. Correct. Okay, well, then it, it's very thoughtful. The whole process has obviously been very, very, very carefully thought through and researched, and, and that, that answers my questions. Right, so kind Thank of you. the wildlife area won't be lit, illuminated, no. really. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that, that, I think that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, and is, is it already lit between um, the, uh, the house where the offices are now and the museum? Yes, there's path lighting there. But you're not working it's on a that. different kind of path lighting. Yeah, and it was a separate project. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So should we um I guess following on, you know, Bruce is very helpful, uh helpfully pointed out. Should we um, you know, look at the fixtures themselves? I mean, maybe we kind of did, but when you not just the light fixtures, but the post, do we have to be, um, are those new additions the posts that they're going on? They are. If you actually, Ben, if you scroll up to the lighting plan, um, I put a picture of what we're proposing. It's a granite post. Right. Um, it'll be core drilled uh, to bring the the wire through it. Keep scrolling. Scrolling down here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, that one? No, no. Go up. Up to the lighting plan. There's a little picture on the lighting plan. Oh, okay. Does anyone see it? Am I the lighting plan is a separate Keep document. Keep going. L5. Oh, L5. Oh. Yeah, it's, oh. A separate, it's a separate gotcha. document. It's this the lighting plan. Go. Sorry about so that. Yep, separate document. The light yeah. fixture photo, that's kind oh. of what it's going to look like. Most of them are going to be 18 inches tall. There's a couple that are uh, on the west side of the evergreens which will be three or four feet but all the others are like 18 inches yeah well that's pretty safe i would say yeah nice it's also gonna last a while <laughs> yeah which is good it's I mean, very exciting project yeah i think it's exciting i think and it really also uh, you remember that from the street there's that hemlock hedge. So you're actually not going to even see the posts or the mm -hmm. lights on top of the mm -hmm. posts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's okay. true. Yeah. So long yeah. as the hedge survives. Yeah. <laughs> it's looking good it's right now. It's doing well. That's right. You know, it's yeah. so aware of how well it's lit. Right. Okay. okay. Um, are there any other questions or comments? I think it looks gorgeous. Yeah. It's just I, such a privilege to live up the street from it. And I, I agree. It I think this my, is my yard. Yeah. I would say Bruce's suggestion about not over lighting, it really is a wonderful addition to that part of town. Yes, I mean, it's interesting because I, I looked at the uh, those uh, distribution charts and you've got uh, two plus foot candles at 50 feet out and um, and, and I know that, for example, when you're uh, in gas stations and so forth, which are pretty well lit, the pavement out that far is less than one. So it's there's three times the amount of, of light, I think, that you might see in a gas station. It seems to me, if, that, uh, if, if, if I'm reading that um, photometric uh, diagram correctly, so it would seem to me that, that the, uh, the lesser uh, uh, 
uh, wattage would 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 be fine. But that's that's just my uh, feeling. Did one thing that could be one, one thing that could be done, uh, which probably wouldn't be very difficult at all, although it might have a it might be problematic from a from a custodial control point of view, is if you put the whole damn thing on a dimmer, even if you could lock the dimmer down so that you could. Uh, Put the, the 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 powerful the more powerful lighting in, and then you could um, adjust it to exactly what you want uh, um, over the course of six months or so or, or a year. Bruce, did you have a chance to drive by and see the lighting at night? No, I didn't. I I thought about it and then I I didn't. I didn't realize that it was so elaborate until I this afternoon sat down with the lighting plan. Mm -hmm. um, and then I realized that I yeah, should have, say, but of I course drove, it was too late by then. But I drove by last night and I have to say, I didn't find it too bright. Okay. Mm -hmm. I drove by last night too, and I felt the same yeah. way. Um, well, we would have to be set, we would, we would have to know that what is there now, and we already know that it's not quite exactly what's right. proposed. Oh, yeah. I was, yeah. I was going to suggest maybe if um and Nate feel free to weigh in if if you if you all want to if you approve the fixtures um and then or you know whatever you want to do but then maybe like make a, a a suggestion to the planning board that um you are or not concerned about the lighting and its um impact on the integrity of the you know historic nature of the neighborhood could be a way to like separate it out. Yeah. Yes. I mean, yeah. I, you know, it's interesting. The I just quickly looked through the bylaw and everything. You know, we say lighting, and we don't really, you know, we say lighting in its entirety, whether that's both the illumination, you know, and the fixture. So um, some districts define it better, but you know, in terms of the color lighting they're using, it's really on the you know the yellower side, which is nice. The warmer light, it's not. You know, they don't go above the three thousand. Hmm. Um, and yeah, you know, so I, I think it could be that there's right the discussion or vote on the fixtures themselves, right? The hardware, and then maybe something separate about the illumination. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think that's, that's, that's well said. Yes. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I would just even add when I went by last night, I, I, I almost thought it was a little under, I know. I, I, like it didn't really feel like lights were on. So I de definitely, you know, so if they weren't, if it wasn't as bright as it was going, as it is intended to be, I, this is, I mean, I don't know why I'm, it's, this is not just my opinion. It <laughs> seemed like even if it was a little brighter than it appeared last night, that that would be okay. Yeah. C can I clarify something there? Yes. So, you know, our intention is to reveal this architecture. It's not to put a spotlight on it. Right. And so um, the, the wall washing lights, my understanding is to kind of fill some of those uh, gaps to make the, the wash on that house more even. So, you know, we're not trying to uh, make this Disneyland. We're trying to show mm -hmm. that, you know, this is a really important piece of Amherst history. Yeah. yeah. I, I think, I, I think I've had uh, we've had our say on this, yeah. and it's uh, and everything that you've proposed uh, has the hallmark of of professional consideration and thoughtfulness. Um, so that suggests to me that my concerns will be um, probably not realised. Um, so I th and particularly having said what we've said, it's right. probably uh, enough for you to take that. In, into your calculus to the extent that you haven't already done so. And, and also the planning board is, is, is going to have a similar um, concern, I would think. Right, and maybe with, they'll, they'll have more Bruce's there to have more yeah. expertise. Um, so I think with uh, that, if there's no more questions, we can uh, have a motion to close the public portion of the meeting. Um, would anyone, I can't make the motion, so. I'll, I'll so moved. Second? I second. Oh, oh, was that Karin? Thank you. Yeah. Okay, all in favor, yes, aye. Aye. <laughs> so, um, so should we, um, I, 
you know, uh, either have more discussion or move to issue the certificate for the hardware? Because again, it sounds like that's what we can issue a certificate of appropriateness for. And then if we want to, you know, just include our comment, you know, our just our um, maybe ad advice that, you know, they're uh, not over light you know, when that, have that suggestion go to the planning board. Yes. That I, we are ready probably to make a motion, unless there's some more conversation about approving the lights themselves and the mounts that they'll be on. Well, I I, I would make the motion and uh, uh, I could, I mean, and, and uh, trust that the uh, conversation uh, regarding lighting intensity and so forth uh, be simply relayed by right. staff, um, I, I, I don't personally feel strongly enough about it that I feel it needs to come in the form of a letter or a memo or anything. Uh, do the rest of you agree? I agree. I agree. Okay. Well, in that case, uh, let me uh, move to approve the granting of a certificate of appropriateness for the uh, um, lighting and pathway. Um, uh, related to the Dickinson and Evergreens house, um, finding that the proposed work meets the review criteria expressed in sections 8.1 and 8.2 of the Amherst Local District Bylaw, and that the proposal is compatible with the overall appearance of the neighborhood and will not have a negative impact on the Dickinson Local Historic District. Um, the work uh, shall be executed in accordance to the documentation submitted by, and um, I think Nate, if you could fill in the title, the, the, the Martha Lyon, mm -hmm. the right. landscape architect, so it's dated, um, and the, uh, the drawings um, L1 to LN. Um, and uh, I don't think I'm going to put any specific requirements. So, for, so that's it. So just basically, uh, mm -hmm. with the, uh, the, the in, 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 in accordance with the documentation submitted, and in so uh, so noted uh, for its um, source and date mm -hmm. and title. Okay. Is thank you. Is thank you, Bruce. That was that was a lot to go over. Um, the motion. <laughs> Is there a uh, second? Second. Thank you, Jim. Seconded. Okay, so we will do um, as we have to do since we're uh, remote or we're having a virtual meeting as a, a voice vote. And at the top of my screen is Peggy. Yes, I approve. And your name? Peggy Schwartz. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Peggy thank, Schwartz. thank you. Uh, Jim? Jim Lumley, I approve. Thank you. Karen? All right, Winter, I approve. Thank you. And Bruce? Bruce Coldham, I approve. And thank you, uh, Greta? Greta Wilcox, I approve. Thank you. And I'm Jennifer Taub, and I approve. So we, you will be issued a certificate of appropriateness. And I think we all agree that we're very excited about this. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, it, it is um, uh, very thoroughly conceived. Yeah. And I'll, I'll convey convey this to the to Chris and the, the planning board. Okay. Well, thank, uh, thank you all for hearing this application and uh, we're excited also. Yeah. Thanks for your thorough discussion. We appreciate it. <laughs> okay, good luck. Thank, thank you. you. Okay, thank you, Selena. Okay. Ben, if I could just uh, uh, add a postscript here. The, the reason for my initial uh, mentioning of, of the difference between urban uh, values with exterior lighting and, and, and rural yep. was made clear on a, on a hill town school, or actually it was the Hardwick Elementary School some years ago. And it wasn't just that we removed one or two uh, bollard, you know, lights and so forth. The exterior lighting uh, was ratcheted down um, three or four hundred percent. I mean, it was a huge uh, reduction that uh, that the okay. uh, town wanted in terms of. Uh, uh, I mean, we were. I was working for Bill Gillen at the time, and, and Bill and I were kind of amazed yeah. <laughs> that 
And I don't think Amos is the same as that by any means, but it just taught me that um, one has to be mindful of where the lighting design is yeah, that's uh, good to, coming good from to keep in and, mind. Uh, and, and how it differs depending on the clientele. Yeah, Greta, thanks, Could thanks, Bruce. The, lights have, the new LED lights were so intense and now they've mellowed them. They're yeah. much better at mellowing the lights. I remember when they first came out, it kind of hurt my eyes driving to Northampton. <laughs> but they've mellowed, I think. Right, they've, I think so as well. They've, they've been able to improve, improve the quality of the light by having a greater uh, color range in the light than this makes up and it's changing all the time. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, a, it's a devil of a job to keep up, uh, but I mean, lighting designers have the worst time in a way or the most exciting time in another way because of course they're, uh, they're, they're needed because yeah. it's the wild west in terms of uh, the product range out there. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm glad they're Great, not, thanks. I'm glad that, that they're improving. Yeah. But I wondered if the Hadley might be also the intensity or the right. Well, the museum's looking better. All I mean, it's amazing what they're. But it's gorgeous. Looking great. Great. I think it looks so yeah. beautiful. Yeah, yeah, it really does. It really does. Nice when somebody leaves you eighty million dollars and says, <laughs> "Go do it." Right. right. Yeah. 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 So we have one one more, um, or we have two more applications um, oh, right. to, to go over. One, one, this one will hopefully be, um, it's also on the town's, uh, it's on the Dickinson property, but it's a town project. Um, and then after that, we have 19 McClellan okay. Street and uh, I, Jamie from 19 McClellan Street is here. Um, so, uh, and I think we might as well just do this, do the Dickinson project first while we have, right. um, okay. Jane, if Jane is still here. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just a little bit of background. Basically the, the town um, is embarking on like a new wayfinding sign project. Um, and, you know, as far as I know, this, this goes back to, you know, um, 2015 around then when, um, money was allocated from town meeting for, for a new wayfinding signs. And um, it was put on pause when town council came into, into being and, um, but the money's still been there. And so slowly we've been working on the design and the siting and the location for these new signs. Um, and the plan is to have four, f yeah, four, like kind of like welcome to Amherst signs around town. And then also these like directional post signs that are mostly in the town center, which, you know, point to like Jones Library, Town Hall, like, you know, UMass, all the different landmarks. But um, one of the welcome signs is basically at the intersection of uh, Main Street and Triangle Street. Um, and we'll be replacing the um, existing Emily Dickinson Museum sign. And, you know, we, we've been working with Amherst College and, and Jane and the Dickinson Museum to uh, basically incorporate some of the components of the Dickinson Museum sign into the welcome sign. So it, it can also point to the Dickinson sign, or sorry, to the museum as well. Um, so I'm going to show you, yeah, here it is, perfect, um, what we've been working on. Um, and so essentially, do you all know where, where, where we are in town right now? This is the intersection of Main and Triangle Street. Um, yes. Yep. So if you're at the intersection at that light, uh, you know, Triangle Street will be to your right and then you'd be looking straight ahead and you'd see this sign. Um, and so this has gone through the design review board at this point. Um, and they, they've made comments which we've incorporated and now we're coming to the local historic district for this sign in particular and then um, the next step in the process would be, you know, some of the other signs need to go through the planning board for, for various permits, but this is the one that's in the local historic district, um, uh, you know. Right. Gotcha. And did, um, did the Emily Dickinson Museum also, like Jane, did you have input? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So the idea, um, so there's a few things um, that we noted, like one, we um, 
we, we made sure to try to take the uh, elements of this sign and incorporate it into the new panel here. So the, um, the logo comes in over here and then the, um, you know, we're pointing out where the entrance is. And um, I should note too, like this brown color, it corresponds to the rest of the wayfinding system, right? So these oh, are gonna, oh, okay. these are gonna be the ones that are placed around town. And so, you know, in, you know, typical highway signs, like brown indicates some sort of cultural or historical site. Um, so we have been consistent with that brown color for the Dickinson Museum and other things such as the West Cemetery. Um, so that's where the brown color comes from here. So it's another kind of cue for people that it's all part of the same sign right. system. Branding. Branding, yeah. <laughs> Branding. I love it. I think it's wonderful. I uh, interject something. Yes. Uh, yes, Jim. I'm not a real fan of block letters. Mm -hmm. I like them when they have serifs on them. Right. Of course, the common uh, one that we see on the internet is Times Roman, um, but something like that. And that kind of, you know, this is common, you know, the block letter. I'll admit that, but it might give a little bit of cachet and quality if it was uh, a serif. It was had serifs on them. Is that too fussy? Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> I I don't agree with you, Jim, but it's not a strong disagreement. It's I, just as I think yours is not a not an emphatic uh, critique, but I think I would. Um, I guess it's you know I'm. I think it's because I'm, I've just had too much time in the architectural business and so lettering on drawings. Um, so I'm probably not a good, uh, I, I'm just, mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm discrediting my, uh, myself here. I think I shouldn't say anything. Um, it's because I, I, I'm, I'm very comfortable with this style of lettering. But okay. as I said, I think that might be because of where I've come from. Great. Jim is an artist. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I think the college uses uh, right. printing. Uh, okay. You now it just jars a little bit. It's a little too much. It should be like Walmart up there or something. Mm. <laughs> I guess the so, problem would be that that this is part of a sign system, right? And, and we've corrected that there are already signs that are installed that have that have committed to this uh, not, lettering not, style, or not? Not, in, not installed. Only only designed at this point. Oh well, then, then, what then, about the one then the Jim's, about? Jim's comment should be brought forward. Yeah, and I do agree with Jim. I think I like the sign. I like all the correspondence, but those block letters are kind of very blunt. I know they should be blunt, but they could be more beautiful. And is it the is it the Amherst or the um, Emily Dickinson Museum? No, the or, Amherst. The Amherst. So I'm just holding this up. Would this be like a serif? I don't know if you can even see it. Yeah, They're really close. I yeah. can't, can't see that. Can't put, see a, put a closer, uh, Jennifer. I just Googled it. There you go. Yes, there's a yeah. serif on that. Yeah, yeah. The whole idea behind serifs is it leads your eye to visually go from one letter to the next letter. In mm. an Rather than an in your face lettering. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> And insofar as it, Jim's speaking specifically of the word Amherst, and, and I suppose Massachusetts, I, I'm much more in agreement than with the, um, the directional uh, lettering below it. So who would that suggestion go to? Um, we're working with a, a designer on this. Okay. Um, so we could, yeah, we could uh, pass that along. And, you know, there's not, obviously we want to keep keep this project moving along, but I, I don't think, you know, uh, changing the font or, you know, a, a slight redesign is going to delay it yeah. that much further. The there, colors there's, there's, are great. Yeah. Oh, Ben, you don't think it's going to delay it anymore? This could be months of conversation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm, ho I'm, ho I'm hopeful, hopeful, Nate. Yeah. We, we, we've been derailed by more than this before. Yeah, so. I, I actually think that this is a little change that the designers could easily make that will have a big impact I mean, those letters are pretty darn blunt and could be a little bit more beautiful and still mm -hmm. 
the message across. I, I agree so strongly with Jim. Great. Okay. I think Ben, right? Am is it Amherst and Massachusetts are both? Are they raised? I forget if it's just Amherst now. No. Uh, I don't. Whoops, sorry. I don't think they're raised. Here's the specs for them. Are they painted? I oh, plate was... aluminum letters, stud mounted. Oh yeah. So they do have a little bit of. They are raised. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Well, they would have to be purchased as serifed. I guess that's possible. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Okay. Um, are there any other uh, questions or comments? Jane, maybe um, I was wondering, uh, whoops, where did, like maybe if, uh, you know, this is a nice serif font here. Right. Um, you know, this one is is sans, sans serif, um, but right. maybe we could try to, you know, play off of the, the existing font um, and uh, I, yeah, and use that for, for the uh, panel signs mm. and maybe something a bit, bit more bolder for the mm. welcome to Amherst, but um, we have a nice font. Right are there signs? I'm sorry. Are there signs at the roundabout? That's what I Are there thought. signs at the roundabout that go, aren't there signs there? Aren't there signs at the roundabout that goes um, into into the university that direct you? Would it be the same letter, the same font and the same um, lettering as the, that sign? I think it should be consistent. So, yeah, the. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, those, those point to downtown um, and are, there's two of them at the roundabout. The so, yeah. yep. Right. Um, and I, so, there, so is there a concern for consistency between the signage and lettering? Yeah, I mean, that, that's a valid concern. Um, I think there's already some differences between those signs. <laughs> the, 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 these are a little bit darker, I believe. Um, those are a bit more, have more of a rusty color. Mm. And I think they, this, those were done without those were done by the uh, business, the, the the bid, the business improvement district. <laughs> um, wh whereas these are coming through the town, okay. and so mm -hmm. we're um, we're trying to match those um, that same designer, but we're we're putting a, li a little bit more details into these. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think yeah that this is the same font as the roundabout um, uh, signs. Mm -hmm. So you know. I guess there's well, some concern about matching. Hmm. Well, if we were to uh, move to approve, uh, or let's say as we move to approve, I imagine that we will, um, uh, we could express an opinion, uh, uh, or at least a preference for a serif font for the for the uh, for the word Amherst, and leave it at that. Then, then because it does seem that uh, the committee, the commission, is. Uh, I, it feels that there's a consensus on on that topic. So if we simply put it into the motion, into the uh, into the uh, certificate, and let the uh, as a preference, not as a not stipulation, as right. uh, then leave it uh, to because there there are these considerations that we may not be aware of that would have to be integrated. But but uh, it seems that there's a there's a consensus and that uh, and, and, a, and, a, and a strongly felt consensus that we would prefer to see a serif uh, lettering, a serif font for the uh, word AMS. Yeah. So thank you, Jim. You're uh, we, yeah, thanks, Jim. You're here as our real estate representative, but you're also an artist, so that uh, <laughs> yeah, well, that's the strength here. <laughs> yeah. Just trying to upgrade the quality, I think, of the visual impact of it. Yeah. yeah. The block letters. But it, it certainly, I don't think we should be guided by what's at, at the roundabout that the bid designed. Uh, yeah. So the bid, you know, they use the same designer, but then mm -hmm. they, they, you know, they took it a little bit in their own direction. So the thought would be that the, the signs that Ben's presenting now uh, with changes would be the final wayfinding signs, you know, the four signs around town. And we'd always, mm -hmm. um, the idea is we go back to the, to the roundabout and change that sign. So we'd want, you know, all these other signs to be consistent and then have the option of changing the mm -hmm. first sign that went in. Yeah, because, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, oh, is this a public oh, meeting? Do we have yeah, to close yeah. no, it? No, no, so do we wanna, yeah. 
uh, have a motion to close the public portion of the meeting so we can move to a vote. <laughs> so moved. Well, no, somebody else, I'm not allowed to make the motion. So someone- No, else. I did. Oh, you did. Okay. Thank you, Bruce. Uh, second? Second. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Greta. Okay. So um, oh. I think we're ready to go to a vote. Are there any um, other comments or questions that any of the commissioners have? What exactly are we voting on? We're uh, voting on the sign. Okay. So yes, we're voting on if we, well, you know, this is an interesting question. Are we actually giving a certificate, Nate, or just, I mean, are we giving a certificate to the town if, if we vote to approve? I assume so. Oh, it seems like it could be in two parts. If I might uh, suggest yeah. that, that we vote to approve the development of a sign, but I'm, I'm feeling like we're getting muddied over now, whether we're also including a stipulation on what the print would be. Right. I mean, it, maybe that. I think Bruce. Uh, uh, yeah, Mark, I think well, I can get us through that right. problem. Yeah. I, I was okay. going to suggest maybe um, if you approve like the idea of the sign, or, or right. and then and then um, you know we could we could also like we've done this with the DRB where we where we take their suggestions and then just like email out the uh, the result and then um, the uh, if there's any um, if there's anyone who uh, doesn't approve that they can respond just individually saying we still have an issue with this and then we'll, we can hold another hearing. Yeah, I guess um, what my question is, would they change the sign just for the LHD if the commission, no. No, I don't right. think so. Yeah, so, okay. <laughs> yeah, so we're. Well, I think it's a good thing to add a sign. I'll just, I think signage like that, I think, has some cachet it's, it's it's delightful and i think we should go ahead with that i agree well um agree. I'll, I'll move to approve the granting of a certificate of appropriateness for the um for the sign uh, the proposed um wayfinding sign of the town of amos to be located at mm -hmm. the intersection of triangle <laughs> and uh, main street Finding that the proposed work meets the review criteria expressed in 8.1 and 8.2, local historic district, and that it is compatible with the overall appearance of the neighborhood and will not have a negative impact on the Dickinson local historic district. Um, and then I, we could add the, the commission, however, um, would prefer to see a serifed font. Uh, applied to the word amist in uh, this sign and uh, therefore similar signs in other locations around the town. Okay. Okay, thank you. I second that. Okay, uh, Karen. Yeah, thank you. Um, so if we can move to a voice vote for all in favor, starting uh, with Bruce. And uh, Bruce your... Calder, I approve. Rita? Rita Wilcox, I approve. Um, oh, I have to go up, I'm sorry. Uh, Peggy? I, Peggy Schwartz, I approve. Thank you. Jim? Jim Lumley, I approve. Thank you. And Karen? Karen Winter, I approve. And Jennifer Taub, and I approve. And thank, uh, thank you very much, Jane. Yeah, thank you, Jane. Appreciate yeah, we it. appreciate that. And I just wanted to add, I maybe another item we could take up is signs entering the two local historic districts, but that's a different meeting. I, I agree. That would be cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, thank you all again. Yeah, right. and thank uh, you. And uh, good luck with all your work. Thank, thank you. Going okay. on. And I'll see see you soon, Jane. <laughs> okay. Bye-bye. Nice. Bye. Jane, Jane and I have a historical commission meeting after this as oh, well. Oh, you're so. kidding. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. <laughs> so, 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 so it goes. And, and yeah. Nate, I should add as well. <laughs> okay. Well, it's 5.45, so maybe we could finish at 6, but... Yeah. Okay. So we are going to move on now uh, to 19 McClellan Street. And is the applicant here? I believe so, yep. 
Yes. So, um, Jamie, I've promoted you as a panelist, um, and you can unmute yourself. Oops. Hello. Hello. Hi, um, Jamie. Th thanks for joining us and, and for your patience. The, um, I have your uh, your application on the screen here for all, for all to see. Um, and um, yeah, go ahead, Jennifer. No, I was just gonna say, um, I don't know if you can see me, Jamie. We can't. Uh, I'm Jennifer Taub, um, at chair of the commission, and you know we appreciate your being here. So yeah, we'll turn it over to you and uh, Ben to make the presentation, and then the commissioners may have some questions, and uh, that would compose the public portion of the meeting. And then you'll stay with us, but we will move in to. Um, the hearing portion and we will make a decision one way or the other most likely on your application today. Uh, that would be our goal. So we'll turn it over to both of you. I don't know if you're both making the presentation or Jamie. Thank you, Jennifer. Um, so yeah, we, we're we just looking to update this front porch that's kind of, um, you know, rotten and disrepair and basically we're hoping to keep it um, as close as the way it is with updated materials, uh, such as composite decking and all like PVC material. So we won't have rotting wood. Um, I did email Ben a couple pictures. Oh, you have them right on there already. Yeah, from your, yeah, from your previous application, yep. Okay. I, I resent a few because I wasn't sure if you had those. So. Oh, perfect. Um, okay. So yeah, that picture there that's on the screen is um, the Trex Transcend railings. Um, it's all like solid um, composite material. Um, the posts that are in that picture are not the ones because this deck, uh, this front porch is going to have the eight foot colonial posts mm -hmm. which if you don't have it here it's in the new email i just sent you okay oh there they are yeah so it'd be posts kind of like that to resemble the ones that were there but it's a composite material um and then the, let's see so that that picture is just for the white vinyl lattice on the bottom the wood there I just kind of grabbed pictures online of the material we're using. So yeah, it would just be the white composite lattice uh, PVC. Um, and the trim boards will be all white PVC, like the, the fascia board on the deck. And around the lattice, we're proposing just white PVC. Um, and the decking boards themselves would be Trex Pebble Gray. Mm -hmm. um, and then the posts are remaining the same? The posts the are, are, are going to be a composite material, but they're colonial style posts, like that picture right there. That's the post. OK, I do have a question, because you have that really, um, right now, there's that really nice design at the top of the post. Yes. Yep. And is that not going to be there? I'm trying to find um, an updated piece, but I, I mean, I could always leave those and, and keep them installed. I mean, they're not rotted out. Um, we could just reinstall those just the way they are if you guys prefer to have them um, for the historical value. Yes. Okay, I see. Because they're separate from that, right? Yes, they they just screw up. Right. So screw I'm not up. touching that ceiling or roof. That I, I'm we're not proposing to do anything with that at the moment. So those those could be reattached to the new post I put in. Okay. If you guys prefer to have those there. I think they're beautiful. They really add to the house. I, I agree, and there's not much updated stuff I could change it to that would look the way that does. Yeah. You know. Yeah, well, that's good to know. I agree, Greta. I think that kind of gives it the look. Oh. 
Are the colonial poles the same size as the poles now, or are they bigger? They are the same. <laughs> they, they look a little different because the railings existing, as you can see, they're only, uh, I think it was like less than 30 inches tall. So the square part on the bottom of the posts continues up higher so it can accept uh, regulation <laughs> railings that 36 inch railings into it. But so you're wait, keeping. Wait, wait for me for the news. Oops, Peggy, you're in. Uh... But you're keeping the, uh, the current railing height, is that correct? I mean, you, 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 uh, the building code, if it were more than 30 inches from the deck to the ground, would ask you to uh, make that um, porch railing higher. But, but it looks like you might not be, um, uh, let's, let's say that you can be uh, 30 inches. And so you can keep the railing height as it is and not make it higher. Is that correct? Um, no, that's not what I was trying to say. Um, the railings that I'm proposing come, they're 36 inches tall. What I, I believe maybe, what I was trying to say is the colonial posts that hold up the, the roof, the square part on the post itself on the new ones continues up higher to accept uh, updated 36 inch tall railing. Yes. But so, you, so you could posing taller than is existing because it's not code what's existing. Yes. Well, but it could be if it's less than uh, 30 inches, if the, if the, if the porch is 30 inches or, or less uh, above grade, then you don't need to have uh, the high railings, which I would encourage you not to have. Okay, I, I understand what you're saying. I do not have that exact measurement um, on hand. I would encourage you to bring some dirt in if you don't. <laughs> okay, so you guys would prefer, you would prefer to have the shorter railing. So. I would. Okay, I, I honestly never considered that portion of it. So. I know. Mm -hmm. I see it. Okay. I, I see the lack of that consideration all too frequently. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, and then the, and then the pole could be slenderer further down and that makes the whole look different. Yeah. Well, I think the, what he's saying uh, is the pole would have to be the same because otherwise he has to go and have it turned and everything. So I think that having the, the post with the, uh, with the, with the, the square uh, base section going up about uh, 36 or 37 inches is probably something that, well, I think That's I could live with. But the problem with uh, lifting those uh, railings up, which is not what we have, and this is right in the front, and of course the window sills are low as well. All of this is working together, and so if we if we were to um, have a, 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 a code compliance, shall we say, for a, 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 a for where the, the the drop off was more than thirty inches, it it just looks awkward. It makes the porch front porches look smaller. It 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 can it can it, it conflicts with the windows that are there. It just looks silly, and and I think we should uh, obligate the applicant to um, do what is necessary to achieve code compliance with the uh, railing that is currently there and install the new one to the same dimension. I would agree. I agree. Yeah, I agree. So we can keep the same symbols. And I, oh, Jim, do you have, Jim, did you want to say something? Uh, no, I mean, I agree with what... Oh, okay, your light went on, so I didn't know. Yeah. I have a question, though. What about the hand railing down from the top of the porch steps down to the ground, the entrance uh, walkway? Uh, is that being changed, Jamie? Yes, yeah, so I, I was proposing to continue the, you know, tracks transcend handrails right down the sides of the stairs. Okay. Um, Oh, I, I think with the height, um, put a post there. I have to rene renegotiate the plan there because I, I guess the height of the handrail would be pretty low if I do lower has nothing, railings. Has nothing to do with the stairs. Mm -hmm. 
were made in a post. Could you not use the railings that are already there? Are they metal? Uh, yes. Well, I uh, think, think it would look nicer to have the wood. Yeah. yeah. Composite, yes. Just yeah, I don't think those hand railings are so beautiful. Right. It's just a round piece of metal. I don't think that's like uh, original. Yeah. No, I'm sure. It's no, I, I actually think it would look much better if you could continue the same railing going down at the lower height, or yeah. maybe it's, or no, it doesn't matter. Couldn't you have a higher height? Yeah. I mean, yeah. It, so just that uh, right. the post on the left at the top of the stairs, yeah. where, where it goes from the railing to the stair rail, I think would have to be a little taller to accept a handrail at the proper height there. Yes, it would. Can I mention that when I visited the property, I felt that there that uh, top of the porch floor was more than 30 inches from the ground level. That's going to trigger that, uh, as Bruce brought out, uh, the um, possibly that the new, if the railing is changed, maybe will need to be higher. We've got one, two, three, four and a half uh, rises. If they're six foot rises, if they're six inch rises, then we're under 30 inches. Uh, yeah. that, Sorry, go ahead. Um, well, there's five if you count. Is my opinion. The one that goes to the porch, right? One, two, three, four, five. That's right. And if they're I, six. I believe, I believe the left side of the deck might be a little higher than um, mm -hmm. where the stairs are off the top of my head. But like, I, I didn't want to weigh in on that because I do not have the exact measurement on hand. Yeah. So. But I've done this before. I just bring a few inches of mulch in to uh, make up the difference so that the uh, inspectors can. Uh, with a uh, clear conscience uh, approve the uh, installation. Okay, yeah, I, I agree with that. They want us to resubmit that or they can- open. Bruce, we're learning your tricks. So this is Nate, um, everyone, it's for people I haven't, you know, I haven't introduced myself. I think the, the commission could, you know, have um, a condition in the, in the permit or certificate that if, you know, if it, if building code allows that the lower existing railing remain and then, you know, if, if, you know, if it needs to be changed by code, it, it would be. Otherwise, like the newel post, you know, at the top of the stairs would have to be higher to accommodate a railing for the stairs. Yeah. Right. Um, yes. Peggy, did you want, was that Peggy that wanted to say something? Ask? No. Oh, okay. No, not me. Well, so I do have a question. This, so just, or uh, maybe a, a confirmation that this, these metal um, banisters will not be there, that there'll be wood. There'll be PVC. So, right, but I mean, they'll look like, um, they'll look like a natural continuation of the railing going it's along the. Yeah, if, if Ben could scroll down a little, I have a picture of, it, it would look like that, but uh, mm -hmm. we're proposing, well, now to, to shorten the height of the actual deck railing right there would be mm -hmm. shorter, um, but that post would have to be about that height to accept the railing. I don't think we can drop the height of the railing. I think you're right. I think it's probably, I mean, it's often done, but it's, 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 it's probably not something that we want to get institutionally involved in uh, stipulating. Yeah, I, I know by code, there's a minimum and a maximum, which we would not meet the minimum if I, I stayed with that same height of the existing rail. Yes, and that's it. And that's a different part of the code. And it, it has nothing to do with whether you're 30 inches above grade or not. Right, correct. So, so basically we would have to put a, a railing in like this if we put a railing in and then we would accept or not, depending on how we feel um, about changing the height of the existing uh, uh, enclosure. Um, I still feel that, uh, that I would, uh, if it were my house, I would put the railing at the, maintain the railing 
uh, height as it is, notwithstanding that there would be a, a new post and a higher um, handrail that goes down the stair. But if everybody understands what I'm talking about, we can decide whether I'm a minority view on this or not. No, I agree with you, Bruce. I think architecturally it, it takes a way to have it be higher for all the reasons that you mentioned, the windows yeah. and just the size of the porch. I think it would look more harmonious and yeah. So I think you, you um, worded it very well that we uh, would accept it uh, to be this size if the code would allow that. And we strongly prefer that. Yeah. Okay. The lower rail. Yeah. So um, could, I'd like to try and clarify real quick with everything I, I gather. So I guess what I'd be proposing now is to maintain the low height of the railings using the Trex composite railings and updated colonial columns to replace the existing columns. With, the, with that trim added. It's a bracket. To a bracket. save the top uh, historic bracket. trim and, and, and reattach onto the new posts. Right. And then the Trex transcend handrails on the stairs, which I believe that, like I said, that left post at the top of the stair would, would have to be a little higher, but the railing would still be lower. Yeah. The new so that that's where, from what I gather, where we're at, and and I, I'm happy to do all that if if there's anything else. Okay. Thank you. That's good. Good. Is there anything anyone would like to add or ask or? No. Okay, uh, okay. move to close the public portion of the hearing. Second. Second. Thank you, Peggy. Okay, all in favor? Yes. <laughs> Aye. No, oh. okay. My computer has no. gone to sleep on me again. Um, I well, I think that was a, a terrific, uh, Move yeah, that was a good good discussion. Yeah, and uh, we okay. appreciate the uh, receptivity of the applicant. Um, are we are we ready to yeah, uh, consider a motion here? Uh, hey, this is Nate again. I just before we leave this, I, Jamie, you mentioned before that you're not touching the roof or the ceiling, but so where the, where it looks like the, the the vertical soffit on the on the beam or the fascia right um, on the porch picture with the stairs so all of that just is going to remain right that the uh, um, owners weren't interested on touching that part at the moment i think uh that's definitely would be a future project but they wanted to the the deck is uh getting pretty rotten so i think that's right what has you're not, and, you're, right are you, now. and are you re-roofing the porch or is it the roofing no, the okay. ceiling roofing fascia Everything, uh, the top of those posts, beyond that, I'm not touching anything. I'm just going to slide a new post in where those are. And then, you know, uh, for the deck, the lower part, I'm, I'm going to put temporary supports, remove the whole existing deck framing and everything, put in new uh, sauna tubes or, or the like, and uh, new framing, and then, you know, decking and everything else we discussed. But yeah, I, I asked because it'd be easier just to wrap it into one approval, you know, if you were planning on it, than coming back. But it sounds like you're not. So, no, I'm not sure when. I kind of through Kendrick said this is what they want done, and that's the job I uh, signed up for so far. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Are we ready? I think we're ready. Yeah. Okay. Um... Move to approve the granting of a certificate of appropriateness for the uh, project at um, uh, 19 uh, McClellan, is it? McClellan, yeah. Um, based uh, 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 finding that the uh, proposed work meets the review criteria expressed in sections 8.1 and 8.2 of the local Amos Local Historic District Bylaw, and that the proposal is compatible with the overall appearance of the neighborhood and will not have a negative impact on the Prospect Lincoln Sunset Local Historical District. Um, 
the work shall be executed in accordance to the documentation submitted, uh, dated, uh, well, I guess it's dated uh, July 15th, uh, uh, 2020. Um, and uh, with the following two conditions. One, that the existing brackets be uh, removed and reinstalled um, as they currently appear. And second, two, that the, to the extent uh, uh, um, allowable by code, um, the uh, uh, the exist the, the, the new railing, uh, the new porch railing, uh, be retained at the current height, notwithstanding that the new stair uh, balustrade and newel will be installed to accommodate a code compliant uh, stair railing. I second the motion. Thank you, Karen. And uh, um, I was going to say thank you, Bruce. You're, you're our synthesizer in chief as well as our architect. So <laughs> thank you. You always get everything in. So we appreciate that uh, very succinctly. Good. Okay, so we'll start on um, Karen. Yeah, so let me see at the top. Yeah, I have Karen first to I'm Karen Winter and I approve. Thank you. Uh, Bruce? Bruce called him, I approve. Thank you. Um, Peggy? Peggy Schwartz and I approve. Thank you. And Greta? Greta Wilcox, I approve. Great. Um, Jim? Jim Lumley and I approve. Thank you. And I'm Jennifer Taub, I approve. Okay. Well, um, thank you, Jamie. Uh, we really appreciate your being so receptive to all our suggestions. Oh, thank you, everybody. Yeah. And uh, good luck. I think, that, I think it's going to, um, it's really going to, you know, it's going to be a great facelift for a, a charming house. Um, mm -hmm. I, I just have one thing I was thinking of real quick. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> what if uh, when I do measure that front porch and we're like 40 inches off the ground, just in case, what, what should I do at that point? Well, that's why the motion was uh, the the motion, the, the, the certificate, the, the wording was to the extent uh, um, possible under the code or whatever exactly what I said. But the thing was that we've given you um, a way in which you could satisfy the objective that we have by putting a, a, a few inches of soil or something <laughs> if it's uh, close to that. And uh, right. But if it is, as you say, uh, significantly higher than that, then you would uh, comply with the code so far as the height of that rail is concerned, which is to say you would lift it up the uh, the wording of this of the uh, certificate does not preclude you from doing that. Okay. Uh, Jamie, uh, I, yeah, Jim. I'm sorry, Jamie. Since you're a uh, contractor, you probably have a uh, uh, construction supervisor's license, and it's clear in your manual the uh, what you actually have to do when when that occurs when that's more than 30 inches mm -hmm. right. right yeah exactly that's what that's, that's I, I just know as part of you guys that you really wanted to keep them shorter for the historical value that's why i said well what i you know yeah but we can't go against what the state rules are on on construction code on the code, yeah. code itself. Uh, yeah yeah i just wanted to uh bring it up so we're all on the same page and uh, i didn't want to just go ahead and make them taller because i had to and you know blow off what we just discussed really. well, i have that license so i'm aware that um you're going to have to follow that code yeah. okay. and jamie we're we're aware that you've heard what we we've had to say and that you know what our preference would be and we'll trust you to um to deliver that if you can great appreciate it thank you okay thank you Okay, this was a uh, we had a lot yeah. of items. Sorry, I think uh, did we did we, sorry just did we vote on that? I know yes, we did. Karen seconded. Okay. Yeah, and then we all voted by voice vote. Ah, yeah. okay, my notes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, a long I, meeting. No, and then did. he asked a question after we. Oh, had that's what it was. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I think that we're um, you know, there's unless there's any announcements, I think we've concluded the agenda. 
Do you have any announcements, Ben or or Nate? Um, I don't have any announcements offhand. Um, no, I think I'll. Um, you know, Bruce had asked about his uh, term expiring, right. and Jim, I think yours may be up. And you know, we were informed from the town by the town manager's office that um, you know you can continue serving until you know either you um, you know you get reappointed, or if you opt not to, then you know you let um, the town manager's office know. So I don't, you know, I think it. I think this week we'll, you know, we'll hear more information on that. But I, you know, you're 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 still bona fide members of the commission. Yeah. That was all I was concerned about. I didn't want to sit through two hours of deliberations to find out that uh, the vote was invalid. You couldn't vote. But, but since they're in their first term, if they want to continue serving, they can. Yes, yep. Right. And they're also representatives from required groups. So, um, you know, we're, as we seek new, if we seek new members, we're required to first, you know, work with the local chapter of the AIA for architects and, uh, you know, for realtors as well. And Jim and Bruce meet those um, categories. So they would be, you know, they would just be reappointed if they, and I think they both indicated they would or, okay. but, so that yeah, would I'm, be a simple procedure. Do we have to do anything formal with the town manager's office, Nate? Um, it, it seemed like they would reach out to you individually if they, but I, so I haven't, you know, they, they said it was fine now. So I, Angela and the town manager's office said they're actually looking at it last week. So I'm assuming shortly we'll hear, I'll let you know if I hear anything. Okay. And well, thank you both for con your willingness to continue. Cool. And we, I guess, are looking for a, a new seventh member. Would that be correct? Yes. Yes. Uh, oh, Greta? I wondered about, so I was thinking about new members too, and I remembered Peggy O'Brien came before uh, us. Yeah. was so delighted with the committee. I, I just wondered if she might be a nice person to suggest or nominate or whatever. Greta, I think that it is a town manager appointment, not the oh. county. Therefore, okay. you might want to let, let the town manager uh, make that recommendation to him. Right, but people on um, Greta, if you even wanted to reach out to Peggy, because she can fill out an application for the town manager and it's right on the website. Okay. I forgot what it's called. Um, Nate or Ben, it's called a CPA or something? Is the yeah. citizen activity form or citizen, there's- yeah, uh, CAF, I something like that. Yeah. yeah I think you all how enthusiastic she was. Um, yeah. And she also just lost her husband, so maybe she's not interested in doing it now. We, remember, she was building the ramp. Oh, I didn't know that happened. Yeah, it just happened. Uh, there was just an obituary yeah. in the paper. Yeah. Oh, I'm oh. sorry. I didn't know he that. You might, he might welcome something like this, too. He might. I just remember she was very enthusiastic. Yeah, she was. And she's Would you want to reach out to her, Greta? I'll do that. Okay. Yeah, so it's a, yeah, it's a community activity form. And it's online. <clears throat> um, yeah, that's that's sad news. I didn't realize that her husband had passed away. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. God. The obituary was just in the paper. Thank okay. you. I'll look for it. I'll mm -hmm. send her a card. Okay. Hmm. He has well. a different last name, but his first name is Wynn. I can't remember his last name. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so um, do we have applications for another a next meeting? Are there any that have come um, in? Yeah, there was an application actually that came in today for uh, new windows at somewhere on Sunset Ave. I, I didn't have a chance to fully look okay. at it, but so, so there is. We should then schedule a November meeting. Yeah, yeah, I think that would be a good idea. And let's see, Monday. Did we usually do the second Monday of the month? Uh, that would be November ninth. Yeah, I just want to make sure. I would need, I would need time for the legal right. ad. Well, we could go up to the twenty third, if that's if you need that much time. Sixteen. Um, yeah, the, I don't want to do that that week. That, that, that's, oh, that's Thanksgiving I, week. Okay. Yeah, if possible, I prefer to leave that open. Yeah, yeah. the sixteenth would be doable. I would have to. I would do the legal ad at the end of this week. Is the sixteenth good for everyone? 
Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay like, for me. Week is not a good week. His, the historical. So Monday the sixteenth. Is that what we? Yeah. Come up with. Okay. At four o'clock. Um, yeah, and as of now, it's just that one one application. But I'll I'll uh, check in to with the permit administrator in town to see if there's any anything else kind of clo close to coming in. And that's a Zoom meeting again. I take it. Yeah, yeah it sure it's is. Yeah, until like next year this time. Oh yeah. Lord. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I miss seeing everyone up close and personal. It's, yeah. uh, I do too. It's a different world. Yeah. I have um, to say in that my phone keeps buzzing and it's all political. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we will be past the election then. <laughs> oh, geez. Yeah. Okay. okay. Well, um, I just so, wanted to uh, see if, uh, if we do have a motion one. to uh, close the meeting. Yeah. Um, just briefly, if there, there is one member of the yeah. public here, Hilda, if, if she wanted to make oh. a comment, um, raise your oh. hand if, if not. <laughs> Okay. So I'm not just saying this for Hilda's benefit, but yeah. I, I actually, it jarred me that I did want to say, if um, any of you were walking or driving by Peace Place, the, um, you know, the house that came before us that we approved is, is almost up. Um, I think it looks really good, so. I do too. I walked by it and I was really, I, that was before I came on board and I said, I didn't have anything to do with this. To my husband, but doesn't it look nice? <laughs> yeah, and I, um, anyway, so it's good. And, you know, I also walk by uh, 100 Fearing Street. And when I think of what was originally proposed and then what is, you know, we're definitely. Um, so we're not wasting our time, huh, Jennifer? Right. <laughs> positive impact in Amherst. <laughs> good. Well, that's good. That's good to know. Because you guys so walk through you, all the time, all. but Jim and I don't. We're we're far, we're further away, so we don't right. uh, we don't see this on a weekly basis. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I maybe. yeah go by and look. Um, yeah. But yes, yeah, so thank everybody. Okay, well, it was a long meeting. Uh, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. Thank you, uh, Peggy. Did I you just second? wanted to say I had nothing to do with that building on Peace Place. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only here to write this up for the uh, Amherst Indies. I know, I know. Oh, good to know. Okay. I was trying to show you my my yellow pad. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Why well, we look forward to not? your articles? Do you I see me, can... or do you? Can you see me? No, no we can't yeah. see you. No. Oh, well, that's good. good. That's good. Okay. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know what came through on the other end. Yeah. Well, if you've if you've clicked your video. Uh, we can see you, and if you choose not to, we can't. No, I don't have the video. I don't have that control. Well, okay, then, then we can you hear you. Definitely can't see. <laughs> not anyway. Thanks for covering us. Okay, so we had a second to close the meeting. I second. second. Okay, yeah. thank you. Okay, all in favor? Yay! <laughs> Bye. Everyone Bye -bye. have a good few weeks. Yeah. Thanks, Vote. <laughs> yeah. Vote. Yes, I already have. I already have too. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you for your time. All right. Appreciate bye -bye. it. Bye bye. Bye.